Hello, this is Dr. Hena Asil, and this is about elements, compounds, and mixtures, uh, mainly for the IGCSE chemistry syllabus. So let's take a look at the difference between elements, compounds, and mixtures. So what's an element? An element is a substance made up of only one kind of atom or only one type of atom so that all atoms are identical so if all the atoms are the same that's an element they could be individual atoms so these are atoms of an element when they are just atoms alone but sometimes they are two atoms joined together in that case we call it a molecule but if both of them are the same kind of atom then this is a molecule but it is still an element so the atoms are individual atoms alone a molecule is two or more atoms joined together if all the atoms are the same that's an element so, for example, everything in the periodic table is an element. Helium is an element and any other thing in the periodic table is an element. Oxygen is also an element, but oxygen is an example of a diatomic molecule in which the molecule is made up of two atoms. So, all of these are elements. Now, what's a compound? A compound is a substance made up of two or more elements chemically combined together in a fixed ratio so for example if i have different elements but they are chemically combined together first of all we said if they are two or more atoms combined together that's called a molecule so these are molecules of compound because they are made up of different elements that are chemically combined together. So, like in water, we have two hydrogens and one oxygen chemically combined together, then this is a compound. Or if we have methane, methane is made up of carbon and hydrogens chemically combined together these are examples of compound or more substances added together this is because they could be two or more elements or two or more compounds so we say they are two or more substances added together and they can be separated easily or we say they can be separated by simple physical means so if i have different types of atoms and they're just added together they're not chemically combined notice that this mixture is some of them are elements some of them are compounds so when you add elements and compounds or different types of elements added together then that is a mixture so for example solutions are mixtures so if i dissolve uh, sugar in water or salts in water that's a solution and it's a mixture so we say that a solution is a mixture first of all now when we dissolve a solid in a liquid the solid is called the solute and the liquid is called the solvent so a solution is a mixture of solute dissolved in solvent the solute is the substance that is dissolved so sugar or salt would be my solute and the solvent is the substance in which the solute is dissolved so the water in this case is the solvent so let's take a look at some questions which statement describes a compound we said what is a compound my first choice says it contains two or more elements chemically combined together. Remember we said what is a compound? Yes, it is two or more elements chemically combined together in a fixed ratio. So if he says physically combined, that's wrong. And the other choices also 
are wrong. And remember that a compound cannot be easily separated. So the two or more elements that can be easily separated, that's not a compound. That's a mixture. So my answer here is A. Which of these is the formula for a molecule of an element? Remember we said, what's a molecule? A molecule is made up of two or more atoms joined together. So we said I can have for an element, I can have individual atoms like my first choice here in A. So if he writes just H, H is individual atoms. So it's not a molecule. It's an element, but it's not a molecule. Now, hydrogen, you should know, is diatomic. So each molecule of hydrogen actually has two atoms joined together. So that is called a molecule. So that's my answer. So H2 is a molecule because it's made up of two atoms joined together. And it's an element because all of the atoms are hydrogen atoms. So this is the molecule of an element. H2O, of course, is not an element. It's a compound. H2O2 is another compound. So my answer here is B. Which of these is a mixture? We said, what's a mixture? Now, if I have sodium alone, sodium alone is an element. We said anything present in the periodic table is an element. That's not a mixture. Chlorine is an element where all the atoms are chlorine. That's an element. Now, sodium chloride is made up of sodium atoms chemically combined to chlorine atoms. And that means that sodium chloride is a compound. Now, what about sodium chloride solution? We said if I, sodium chloride is what we call salt. So the common salt that we add to our food is sodium chloride. If I say sodium chloride solution, that's mean, that means I'm dissolving salt in water. And salt in water is a mixture. Now, you should realize that substances can either be pure substances or impure substances. So we said pure substances, elements are pure. They don't have anything added to them or they don't have any impurities added to them. Compounds alone are pure substances. But remember that a mixture is an impure substance. Okay, so pure substance is something that contains no impurities. Now, we should know that if I have a pure substance, then it will have a fixed sharp melting point, a fixed sharp boiling point. So if we're talking about pure water, for example, pure water will melt or the pure ice will melt at zero degrees Celsius and pure water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. So a pure substance will have a fixed sharp melting point and a pure liquid will have a fixed sharp boiling point. So what if the substance has impurities? What is the effect of presence of impurities on the melting point and the boiling point? You should realize that we said if the substance is pure, it has a short melting point and a short boiling point. But what if it is impure? If it is impure, then it will start to melt or boil over a range. First of all, it's not a short melting point and it's not a short boiling point. It tends to melt over a range or boil over a range. And if we are talking about a solid, then the presence of impurities will cause it to melt at a lower temperature than it should. So, for example, we said pure water should melt at zero. If I have ice that is impure, it has some salt in it, for example, then it will melt at a lower temperature than the normal uh, melting point. Now, if we have water as a liquid, we said pure water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. What if it is impure? What if it is a solution of salt or a solution of sugar? That means water that has impurities in it. 
then it will boil at a higher temperature than it should. So instead of boiling at 100, it could boil at 101, 102, 103, 104. So remember that presence of impurities causes the melting point to be lower and the boiling point to be higher. So in a solid, an impure solid will melt at a melting point lower than it should be over a range of temperatures. So it's not a sharp melting point. It's melting between, for example, minus four to zero. If it has a liquid, if it's a liquid and it has impurities, then it will boil over a range and it will boil at a boiling point higher than it should. Remember, impurities lower the melting point and increase the boiling point. Why is that important? Well, there's several areas in our everyday life where substances should be pure. For example, the foodstuffs that we eat, when we eat any types of food or drink, we should have pure substances that don't have uh, impurities in them or uh, things that are harmful in them, so that foodstuffs should be uh, pure. Drugs, and in this case, please remember the word drugs here refers to medicines that are taken to uh, change something in the body to improve any uh, or make any adjustments to the body. So these are called drugs, and of course, the medicines or drugs that we take should be pure. And the drinking water that we drink should be pure. So let's take a look at this question. What is always true? What is always true for a pure substance? So what are the choices? It always boils at 100 for any pure substance? No, only pure water will boil at 100, but not any pure substance. It contains only one type of atom. No, we said pure substances could be elements or they could be compounds. It has a sharp melting point. Yes, we said if substance is pure, then it will melt at a specific melting point and it will boil at a specific boiling point. So a pure substance should have a sharp melting point. Which substance should be pure for the intended use? Which of these should be pure before we use them? A drug for curing disease? Yes, a drug that we take for curing disease should be pure. What about things like limestone for iron extraction? Limestone is calcium carbonate that I use in industry to purify iron. Petroleum for fractional distillation. Water for washing a car. Does the water you use to wash the car, does it have to be pure? No. But a drug that we take or a medicine that we take for curing disease, that should be pure. What can be used to test the purity of the crystals? Remember we said if I have a pure crystal, it should it should have a sharp melting point or a sharp boiling point. So remember that pure solids or pure crystals, to test their purity, I test the melting point. If they are pure, they should have a specific melting point that is sharp, not over a range. If we're talking about a liquid and I want to know if the liquid is pure, I test it boiling point. It should boil at a specific temperature and uh, sharply not over a range. Okay. What could be the melting point and boiling point of water containing a dissolved impurity? Remember we said if we have impure water, what happens? As a solid, it should melt at a temperature lower than zero. So if we say minus three or plus three, no, it should melt at minus three. Impurities lower the melting point. What about its boiling point? You know that pure water should have a boiling point of 100. What if it is impure? We said impurities increase 
the boiling point. So instead of 100, it will boil at 104. That is possible. A gas has the molecular formula NOCl. So this is nitrogen with oxygen with chlorine joined together. So these are molecules. Which diagram show molecules of pure NOCl? Pure means all the molecules should be the same or all the atoms should be the same. So NOCl, you cannot uh, use A as an answer because A has individual atoms. This is actually a mixture of elements. This is not what we're looking for. We're looking for a compound in which the nitrogen and oxygen and chlorine are chemically combined together. So my choices could be B or C or D. In B, all of them are the same. One nitrogen, bonded to one oxygen, bonded to one chlorine. So this is actually my answer. So the answer here, pure NOCl. All of them are NOCl. C is made up of elements, and this is a mixture of different elements. D is made up of compounds, and this is a mixture of different compounds. Which diagram represents a mixture of compounds. Remember, the word compounds means two or more elements that are different, chemically combined together. So A does not apply. B does not apply because this is a mixture of elements and compounds. Remember, if both atoms are the same, that's an element. If they're different, that's a compound. So B is a mixture of elements and compounds, while in C we have two different types of compounds. That means different elements chemically combined together. So the mixture of compounds is C. Of course, D is all of them are the same. So this is not a mixture of compounds. All of them are the same compound. In which row are the substances correctly classified? So we have different choices and we want to know which of them is an element, which one is a compound and which one is a mixture. So for example, we have sulfur, a sulfur element, compound or mixture. We said anything you can find in the periodic table is an element. Because if I say sulfur, that means all the atoms are sulfur atoms, so that's an element. What about water? We have water. We said water is made up of two hydrogens with one oxygen, so that is a molecule of a compound. So water is a compound. What about brass? Do we know what is brass? If we have not studied brass as an alloy, brass is an alloy. Alloys are mixtures of different types of metals. So brass is a mixture, so my answer in this case is see. And that's the end of this part of the uh, videos. Uh, thank you for listening and please continue listening to the videos. Thank you.